The TCLK5 is one of the cheapest 4K TVs currently in the market, but is it worth buying? Well, let's find out in this review. Hi, welcome to Zigajo Review. The TCLQ5 QLED 4K TV from TCL is the entry level TV within their lineup. What that means is that TV doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. It's the most basic TV that they sell, but that does not make it a slouch. This TV actually has a lot more features than I would expect it to have for the price. Of course, because of the price and where it sits within the lineup, you're going to get some compromises with the TV. So let's get started with this review. The TV is all plastic built, so it has a plastic bezel, plastic chassis. The TV is an oval shape here. You can see that it's kind of like roundish in the back. It's not a perfect square. The TV isn't super chunky either, which is good. It's pretty thin here. It's chunky towards the bottom there where you have the speakers. And here's the sound of the plastic. The TV has very thin bezels, which make the TV look a little more premium than most TVs at this price point. This TV comes with three HDMI ports, as you can see there. HDMI 3 is the eARC port. And here you have your adapter, headphones, your optical, USB, and your Ethernet port. The three HDMI ports are 2.0, so keep that in mind. They are not 2.1 like most 4K TVs have nowadays. They're all 2.0. What does that mean? That means that you don't get the big plethora of 2.0 features that most 4K TVs do. But this TV, as I said a little bit ago, is not slouch. This TV actually still offers variable refresh rates within the 2.0 HDMI. It also offers TCL's game accelerator feature for gaming, which ramps up the refresh rates to 120 Hertz. But you do have a compromise there. As I said at the beginning, this TV is going to have compromise. Your resolution drops to 1440p. So this is going to do 1440p at 120 Hertz, not full 4K at 120 hertz. If you're looking for a TV for gaming that is going to be able to take advantage of all the features on the current gen consoles, this TV most likely isn't for you. The TCL Q5 QLED that I tested is a 4K 60 hertz 55 inch TV. The TV is currently selling for $280. And I think it's a good price point if you're looking to upgrade from an older TV to a 4K TV and be able to get a pretty good amount of features for your money. Now the TV does support Dolby Vision, HCR, and HDR10+. The screen, as I say, is a QLED LED TV with direct lighting, which means that the whole screen is lit up by a bunch of different LEDs. This TV lacks a local dimming, which means that you won't get those dimming zones on the TV. This, of course, is going to affect the intensity of the blacks on the TV, since you're always going to have the same lighting on the panel. Now, I couldn't really figure out what type of panel this was, if it was an IPS or VA panel, uh, because it doesn't really specify on the specifications for the TV. But um, based on what I've seen, based on the contrast ratio, I'm going to say that this is a VA panel. It, it does pretty good at contrast. It doesn't do great, but it does a lot better than I would expect to do. And because of that reason and the, the TV being uh, direct lit, I'm going to lean towards a VA panel here. The TV doesn't do very well with direct lighting on the screen. As you can see here, you can see the light bulbs that are pointing towards the screen and you can see that fan jar rating as well. And that's because the, the way where the TV is sitting and the way that light is hitting it, you can, you can see the reflection. So it doesn't handle reflections that well. But if you have light far away from it, which I also tested, um, you, you won't have that much issue with it. It does not support Dolby Atmos, but I wouldn't expect the TV at this price point to be able to support Dolby Atmos. But let's talk about picture quality. Let's talk about sound and all those other things that make this TV. Here we have the Starfield, and this gives us an idea of how well the TV does in a dark 
screen with a star field show. And we can get an idea of also how the screen does in very dark scenes. There's a little bit of uh, light leak in on the corners there. It's not distracting, uh, but it is noticeable. And here you can see what it would look like with the screen being completely dark and having these stars going through it. The screen does pretty well here with the start field show. This is for screen for me, and I'm going to say that it does a really good job at showing the screen white. I don't really see any gray areas or dark areas as we see sometimes in this type of TVs. And then here we have a black screen, and I don't know if the camera is capturing it, but I can see a little bit of light leak here in the corner here, in the corner up here, and then a little bit on the corner here and the corner up there. But again, it's not distracting. It's, I will say it's pretty even. When you're looking at TV straight, unless you have a complete dark screen like we're doing right now, you won't really notice it. Despite the TV being direct lit, which I thought was going to have tons of issues when I was doing this testing, it does it does an okay job at, at presenting blacks. Of course, you're not going to get inky blacks here. You are going to get those grayish blacks, but it's not as bad as I thought it would have been. I really was expecting this to be like completely washed out and distracting when, when I was watching content, but that was not the case. And so I was pleasantly surprised with that. Here we have some examples of skin tone tests with a TV, which a TV seems to do a good job at reproducing. Skin looks natural, colors seem pretty accurate. Looking at the color chart next to the models, Here we have that demo with the honey with the black background. And then gives us a better idea of what the screen looks like on something like this. And you can see that we have some, some light leak at the bottom and top of the images. So here we see there's a little bit of light leak around the honey and the top and bottom of the screen there. The, the same thing we have here. Colors are nice. The colors are punchy. That's a really good job of producing the colors on the screen of what we're seeing. Let's look at some real life content. Here we have the opening scene of John Wick 3. The reason I'm using this thing is because it takes place at night. The city of New York has a lot of lights. You have uh, things going on in the sky. And I wanted to give you an idea of what a 4K movie on this TV would look like. Even though you have a direct line on the, L on the LED screen, it doesn't have the zone dimming. Still does a pretty good job at giving you contrast and color. It's not bad. A lot better than I would have expected it to be. Here we have a scene from the newer Batman, the Robert Pattinson Batman movie. Here we have a lot of light and rain is a dark scene. But as you can see on the cowl, on Batman's cowl, we can see detail when the light hits him. We can see really, really good detail there. You can see the definition of the lines, his eyes. And then here we have that big scene where we have the big explosion, the crash of all the cars and everything to see how the TV handles something that is suddenly bright on the screen when you have a dark image like this. It's a pretty dark image. And here we have the big explosion, the fire. It doesn't overpower the screen. You still have the detail there, which is good. And so I am very impressed with how it handles real content. This being an LED TV, you obviously have to be at the center of the screen in order to be able to get the best picture. The TV has really poor viewing angles. So the more to the side that you are, the worst experience you're going to get. If you're in a big room, this is a 55 inch TV like that I tested, as I said earlier, where people are sitting kind of far away from it. If you have kind of like people like, let's say I'm in the middle and you have people to the sides, you should be okay. But anything out of that angle, uh, the, the screen starts looking milky, if that makes sense. So keep that in mind when you are looking at this TV. Sound-wise, the TV did okay in the room that it was located in, but I feel that if it was in a big space, you will probably lose some of that sound. So if you want good sound out of this TV, my recommendation would be for you to get a soundbar. This TV uses Google TV as its uh, smart TV platform. Let's see how it operates. This is my first time using Google 
TV. If you have a Gmail account, it will use your Gmail account to populate information on the Google TV platform. So whatever you use on YouTube, things like that will show up here. Originally, when I was signing into Google TV, it asked me to download Google Home app, which I didn't download because I don't use it. So I decided to skip that part and I was able to get around it without any issues. Here on the top, we have a carousel with some of the recommendations or advertisements that they have. For example, here they had the best of 2023. I'm assuming TV shows and movies. Then when we move down here to the topics for you, I'm assuming that it pulls it based on your watch history, the programs that you've watched. Then down here you have your apps. And of course, it's self-explanatory. Any apps that you've downloaded and you use are going to show up there. If you go to see all, it's going to take you to all of the apps that you have downloaded and the apps that came with the TV. If you want to organize the apps, you hold the OK button and it's going to give you these options here for move, open or view details. And then you go ahead and do what you want to do. Continue watching is again self-explanatory. Any programs that you were watching before that you want to continue watching will be in that row. Then down here you have your free live and news opinion. It looks like news channels for free. YouTube then for renting movies, buying movies and all the suggestions that most smart TV platforms have. The way it's set up, it kind of feels to me like Fire TV. Actually, probably better, in my opinion, because you have access to the things that you want a lot sooner instead of having to thread to, through a lot of um, advertisement and things that you might not necessarily have use for. I'm still personally a fan of WebOS. I think it does a much better job at giving you what you need right away instead of having to go through different rows to get to what you want to get to. And then here's to give you an example of what regular programming looks like. Here we have a football game, a college football game. Here we have the Oregon-Washington game. To give you an idea of what regular programming on TV looks like and you know sports it looks pretty good it does it does a good job obviously this is going to depend based on if you use a TV antenna or your internet connection and the reason is because here I have a Hulu TV so it's this regular TV being streamed to the TV so the quality of the image of course is going to depend on your internet connection there's a pretty good internet connection here so we have a pretty good picture but i i feel like that the tv is pretty clear you can see numbers you can see faces the colors are, are natural um it's not it's not a bad image the tv remote is pretty skinny and light it's pretty long as well it has a tcl logo in the back and the nfl logo for the sponsorship of the nfl which i'm not a huge fan of now, this TV, of course, is not for everybody. This TV, as I said, to someone who, you know, is, is uh, upgrading from a TV, they don't, do a, they don't do gaming, just watch regular TV shows and things like that. This is, this is a good TV for something like that. But this TV doesn't get super bright when it comes to HDR images like Dolby Vision or HDR. But it does a pretty good job at handling the higher brightness and and the picture looks looks much better you know you can tell the difference between regular sdr content and hdr content but don't expect this to be a uh, demo worthy type of screen but you'll be able to enjoy some of that hdr content but this tv does a lot better than i expected it to do especially for the price points 280 dollars if i have if i had to compare it to the amazon fire tv which is kind of what i was trying to look as a comparison point that that the amazon fire tv the only tv is much better than this tv but also is twice the price of this tv if you're looking for a cheap way to get into 4k to enjoy hdr content this is a pretty good option if you don't have 500 dollars to spend on a new TV, right? If you're looking to, to for example, have a teenager and you're trying to put a, be a TV in their bedroom, this TV will also do pretty good for that, you know? This TV is, it, it does what it needs to do for the price. And, and for the price, I would recommend it. $280, this TV, you really can't go wrong. It is going to actually show you what 4K can do for you, as I've shown some of those clips. And what do you think about the TCL Q5 QLED TV? Have you been looking at this TV? Do you have any other questions that I might be able to answer? Let me know in the comment section. That is it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. 
Go ahead on. Hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have videos. And thank you very much for watching.